Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be showing you how to remove and install your AR-15 barrel assembly. Uh, you can do it in different ways, you know, depending on if you're putting a free fault rail and stuff like that, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. But we're just going to show you how to do the basic one here uh, in today's video. Reason being, I uh, recently got a Colt Canada barrel in. Um, those are Colt Hammer Forge, for those of you guys that don't know, sort of rare here in the U.S. Uh, so we're going to take uh, the barrel off one of my 6920s and uh, throw this one on there because uh, it's just kind of cool. So uh, that's pretty much what's coming up today, guys. Up next, we're going to step out in the garage. I apologize out there. It's a gigantic uh, room, obviously, being a garage. The lighting and the audio is a little bit poor, but uh, I think the information in the video should still be valid, uh, just with a little bit of a subpar audio lighting, uh, at least for the channel here. But anyway, we'll work through it. If you're going to be doing this, I do recommend that you use some sort of uh, upper receiver block here. This one here is the Brownell set, but there's plenty of others out there. We'll put a link in the video description below so you guys can check pretty much anything we use in this video out. So uh, basically what we're going to do is take our upper, stick this piece in right there, slide it in, close your dust cover, and uh, clamp it on. Again, there's different styles that will work differently, but essentially they're all going to do the same thing, which is uh, secure the upper receiver to make sure that the tension that we're putting on the barrel nut here in a minute isn't going to uh, crack the upper receiver, which is very possible if you do this without it. I mean, I know people out there will say, oh, I never used a barrel receiver or barrel uh, block, but, or receiver block, excuse me, and it worked fine. Well, okay. <laughs> you can certainly look around the internet and see plenty of pictures of uh, examples where folks tried that and it didn't work so well. So that's how we're going to do it. Just tighten it down and we'll move on to the next step. Now we want to remove our hand guards here just to make sure we know what we're looking at and can see the guts when we're actually uh, working there. We're going to remove it by pulling back here on the delta ring and just kind of pull down and pull up. Some of these, like this one that's new, can be pretty tight. The next step in the process is removing this little pin right here, the roll pin that's going to hold our uh, gas tube in place. So just going to take a punch and drive it out. And there's our roll pin right there that you see there. We want to uh, hold that because we're going to reuse it here in just a second. That is it. If we can get the camera to focus on it, it's a little. So. With this kind of setup, we have to actually remove the upper here to pull our gas block out. So we'll uh, take the top piece off here. And at this point, the gas tube, we just slide it up and then just sort of work it to the side here and pull it out. Now we're going to put the block back in same way we did originally. Close up that dust cover and put our top piece on, put it back in the vise. This is one of the parts we're going to need a special tool for. We have the uh, Tapco wrench here. There's a million different ones out there. The Tapco works fine. I've broken one of them of all of the myriad of ARs we've worked on over the years and actually this is the replacement so Tapco will replace it for free if you ever break one so that's certainly an advantage of them but Magpul makes good ones um, and Brownells makes a really good one as well but we'll put a link for this as well in the video description. So what we're going to do is this delta ring here, we're going to take that off. Now, uh, some folks out there that want to use a free float system or something like that will have to remove their uh, front side post here, and I'll put a link for a video where we've done that before in the past as well. Um, we're not going to be doing that. We're replacing an entire barrel assembly here, so that's what we're going to do in this video. And what we want to do is just line these teeth up here with your barrel nut. Get it all lined up on there. And once it sort of locks into place to press that, uh, I'll do it this way, actually it'll be easier on camera. We're going to depress the uh, delta ring, which is this piece right here, and just kind of give it a sharp whack. There you go. At that point, it should pretty much spin right off, which it does. Now, an important note there, if that doesn't come off as easily as that one did, um, that's just fine. I recommend using some heat for it. I tried to start out with a heat gun. If the heat gun doesn't work, a torch certainly works just fine. Just be careful with all the equipment and stuff like that, obviously, that you're working with. But heat gun should uh, loosen it up just fine. We loosen it up all the way, and we can pull it out. At this point, we can just pull our barrel out as well. And that's your barrel assembly. You'll note there's some factory oil in there. Um, so when you're replacing it, uh, you know that the factory puts the oil on there. This one's brand new. It's never been used like we talked about. So um, oil or some sort of uh, lithium grease or, you know, there's other compounds that can be added on there. But you do recommend putting something in there to uh, make sure that barrel doesn't seize up in your upper receiver long term. Just a note there. So we're going to do that next when we install the replacement. 
For the replacement, we're going to use some lithium grease. Like I said, the oil will work just fine. Any kind of oil you have in there or anti-seize uh, lubricant. Really, whatever it is, you just want to make sure you put something on there to prevent it long term should you have to remove this barrel. So uh, we've got it lined up. What we're going to do is we're going to line this little notch in your upper receiver up with this piece right here, the little notch in your barrel. We'll get that one tightened in and uh, we're going to torque back down our barrel nut. Again, if you're using something aftermarket, um, you may have to you know, use their barrel nut or their wrench, whatever the case may be, but with the mill spec ones that we have here, we're just going to tighten it right back down with the same tool that we use to take it out. Now that we've got it sort of hand tightened down there, what we're going to use is use a torque wrench to ensure we get it down to the right torque specs. And pretty much any of your AR tools are going to have a spot here where you can put your torque wrench in. We're just going to hold it in place to make sure the teeth catch and uh, torque it down to the proper spec. And we'll get into one more consideration here in a second. With our barrel nut, what we want to ensure is the little teeth here are going to allow for the gas tube to go straight through. And you can kind of test fit it here uh, just to make sure it goes straight through into the upper receiver, which this one here does. So at that point, what we're going to do is reinstall the gas tube. One thing I should mention is that if your teeth don't line up like this one did, uh, what you're going to want to do is just sort of back it off and then retighten it down, back it off, retighten it down. Again, staying within the recommended torque range um, until your teeth line up. If you do that a few times, It'll line up, I assure you. You just have to take a little patience with some of them, but some of them will line right up, right out of the bat. For the gas tube, there's uh, three holes in there that you're going to see. You're going to see the large hole and then two smaller holes that are going to go all the way through the uh, gas tube. The large hole is going to go facing down towards your barrel, and uh, the pins are going to go right through. The pin that we removed is going to go through those two smaller holes in your front sight block, or you may have a low profile gas block, whichever one you have. That's what we're going to use. We're just going to put it back through, kind of like we took it out. And uh, sometimes it's tight fit in there, so we're going to get it lined up here on our gas block. And again, making sure that hole is actually facing down. It's kind of key to this process. And uh, if you have a retainer up front like we do here on this one, you're going to want to make sure that you line everything up. And uh, we're going to line that hole up. Pardon my big head being in the way. But uh, we got to get it lined up so we can see the actual holes there where the pin's going to go through. And there you go. To install your roll pin, you can do it in the vise, or I'm just going to do it here on the ground, trying to keep my big old arms out of the way, but we're just going to put it in, drive it through that hole that we just showed. It's obviously easier if you're trying not to get it on camera, or not trying to get it on camera, I should say. I'm just going to get it started there. Use needle nose pliers or whatever you have there. I'm going to try to... You just want to get it flush with your front side block. That's all there is to it at this point. You can just put your hand guards back on, or if you want to put new hand guards on at the time, you can do that as well um, and get out to the range with your new barrel. If you guys uh, have any questions about anything we talked about here in the video today, anything maybe that I didn't show clearly enough, by all means, post below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.